this editing video. Uh, I'm Alex with Hobbyist Audio, and today I'm going to talk to you all about multi-track drum editing using Cubase. Um, there's plenty of videos out there about uh, using uh, Beat Detective and stuff like that in Pro Tools, but not a whole lot out there for Cubase. So that's the whole reason for uh, the season here. Um, I've got this track that I recorded like 10 years ago in a barn using some pretty awful gear. I think it came out pretty good. Let's check it out. Um, sounds are decent enough, I guess. Um, there's no processing on any of these, so... Um, that leaves me a lot to work with if I ever wanted to work with this again and actually put it out there and release it. Um, but if I listen along to the click track, things aren't in time very well. So we did uh, track to a click track. We just, I didn't know how to edit back then. So. So yeah, right there at that transition, you can hear uh, the drummer rush, and after a couple of measures, he was back on the click pretty well. Um, but it was a weird um, uh, transition. So let's tighten that up. And if I really, really wanted to, I could tighten up the entire song. Uh, but I don't have that kind of time in this video to to just show you all that. Uh, so the first thing I need to do is go into uh, double click on my tracks and edit hit points. So I'm just gonna pull up this threshold to right about there. So only my kick, 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 if I can play that. Only my kicks are triggered, cool. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing with my snare. So right about there. Cool. Uh, so my kicks are triggered, my snares are triggered, and that's all I want. That's all I want. I could do toms, I could do uh, overheads and room mics if I really wanted to, but I don't. And now I'm going to move all of my tracks to a new folder. I'm going to go to the very, very end of my song because for some reason I did not end all of my audio recording together. And over here, my folder track is all of my tracks. I just click on that and I held Alt and clicked on that and it brought up the chopper tool. So now my audio all ends together and it all starts together. And whenever that happens, I can do boom, group editing. So now I can go click and click and then I can move that around and it all moves together. Um, the point is so that it maintains phase coherency between microphones. So let's go to that section where things get weird. You hear that? It's off by about an eighth note, sixteenth note, something like that, right there. Uh, comes in early, comes in early, comes in early. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go hold the Alt button down, click right there, and then that's pretty close. So I'm going to chop right in front of that transient. And then I'm going to highlight all that, and I'm going to hold Alt, and I'm also going to hold Control, and just slide everything over. This here is called slip editing and it is incredibly handy and incredibly powerful uh, and it's a very very good way to edit drums if you have the time and if the drums uh, aren't well either way it's gonna be time consuming um, if you have really really tedious drum parts uh, this will be the way that you want to do it uh, which I will demonstrate I guess now might as well um, Let's make sure that my project fades are set up. So I'm gonna do auto cross fades, six milliseconds, sure. That means whenever I click there, it's automatically gonna fade in there. Whenever I click there, whenever I click there, I'm gonna click right there, and I'll click right there. 
And that should be that. Okay, perfect. So to start off, my kick, boom, right on the downbeat instead of being a beat early. These guys, I'm okay with them being right there. This guy is pretty close, but I'm going to line it up just so it's slightly back behind that beat. Same thing for this guy over here. That guy's pretty good. This guy needs to come up some. It's a little bit behind. It's a little bit lagging. So is this kick drum right here. And if I go and I highlight from there to there, I'm just going to go 19 to bars 19 to 21. Everything is maintained. Phase relationships are beautiful. Um, my uh, audio sounds perfect. It's right on the click. Um, I can pull that back a little bit further if I really wanted to. You can kind of hear a little bit of flaming from the next kick hit, uh, but I'm not too worried about that. So let's undo all of this. I'm going to leave this right here. Um, because if I don't, um, what I'm going to try to do next and show you next is not going to work properly. So let's open up my quantize panel. And you know those hit points that I created? Well, here's where they are. Red, 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 red. Uh, if I was going to chop up all of my audio, those red marks would be the slices. Chop, 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 chop. This is basically beat detective right here. Slice, and then I hit quantize. Now, uh, it sounds kind of bad right now, and this hit is a little late, so I'm going to move that guy back up. And I'm going to highlight all of these guys. I'm going to hit crossfade. Now, I don't like that crossfade length. So we go to project, auto fade setup, crossfades. Oh, there we go. That's actually what I wanted it to do. It always acts weird. And I'm gonna bring it down to about 11 milliseconds right there. And I can listen to it now. For this to actually work out well, I need to do that. Get rid of that, and then maybe. That sounds pretty good. It's right on the money. Um, I can start working my way through the rest of the track like that. But let's show the last one. And actually, um, yeah, yeah, let's show, let's show the last one. So I'm gonna undo, 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 undo everything right there. It's that little hit right there that's just screwing everything up. Um, let's talk about audio warp. Audio warp acts very, very similarly to quantizing, uh, except it doesn't actually make slices. It, it, um, uh, it just kind of moves everything, time stretches everything. So I'm gonna set the uh, grid to eighth note grids again, and I'm gonna hit the quantize panel, boom. And that's it. Everything is quantized back to the grid. Uh, let's listen, and I'm gonna listen without the click. So we heard it's right on the click, but it 
sounds a little bit different. Listen to the kick drum. I was turning it, uh, <clears throat> going back and forth between quantized and undoing that, and you can kind of hear the kick drum, especially right there, uh, it dies. So let's do that one more time so you can pay attention to it now. So this would be my least favorite method of multi-track drum editing. Um, it's certainly usable and you can do a lot with it. Um, but the, the other ways are, um, they don't affect the sound as much. Um, and they're just as good. This one is actually pretty quick. I do like it for that. Um, I don't care. Quantize. Actually, let's go ahead and see if I can move this to eighth notes and go boom. See, that's, that's the problem right there whenever you got those quick hits on the kick drum. You have to move it back to eighth or sixteenth notes and go boom, like that. And then double check it to make sure that everything is good. I want to redo that. All of these things pop up. And that's multi-track drum editing. Um, if you have the time, again, and you want to make sure that everything is on point, slip editing is the way to go. Just chop in front of the transients, chop in front of the grid lines that you need to go to, get a cat to annoy you constantly. I know, Penny. I know. There you go. And this has been Drum Editing. I've been Alex, uh, and this is Hobbyist Audio.